can you hear me please hi yes. hi hello you. thank you. yes hello yeah can you hear me yes we can Mira? thank you yeah oh okay 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 Thanks, so we're just going to say welcome everyone to um, the September meeting of the International Model Investment Club. I'm not sure if you're able to see my screens. If someone can confirm for me, that would be great. Um, otherwise, um, thank you for joining. Uh, just a little bit of background about our club. So pardon me. My name is Mean McHale. I'm the current president of the club. Um, and so thank you again for joining. I just want to give some background about the club. Uh, and some of the ground rules before we move on to tonight's agenda, uh, followed by um, the, the substance of our meeting. So uh, we are a club that's founded in May of 2016. Uh, it's a better investing model club, and we are open to the public to join and to visit our meetings. Uh, our meetings are uh, held monthly, occurring on the third Monday of each month. Uh, in December, we meet on the second Monday of the month uh, to avoid any of the, the holidays. Um, in this club, we do use hypothetical money this allows us to avoid issues with currency exchanges, taxation, um, club membership, and allows our membership to um, really be international. So uh, at this time, we have 13 members from across the United States, Canada, as well as China. Um, all our meetings are held online as, as a result. Uh, that allows us to serve guests and visitors from uh, across the world. So um, welcome from wherever you may be joining us. Um, the purpose of this club is uh, to act primarily as a learning lab. Uh, this allows us to apply the better investing principles and fundamentals of stock investment um, using some of the tools available to us and the resources such as the uh, online stock selection guide and um, uh, some of the resources through better investing, um, as well as to allow us to learn how investment clubs are set up, how they operate, um, and how to manage them most efficiently. So uh, just uh, as you can see, we have uh, the, the, the control panel, the, the, the panel on your the right hand side of your screen. The agenda for tonight's meeting is available under the handout section in that panel. Uh, you'll be able to download a PDF version. Uh, all our guests and visitors welcome. Uh, you will be mute, muted for the duration of the meeting. Uh, you, please feel free to post any questions you may have in the questions uh, sub tab of the control panel on the right hand side. We will do our best to answer them in live time um, while we're on the subject and to address any of either the questions or the feedback that you may have on, on the subject. At the end of the meeting, we will uh, unmute you for questions, comments, feedback, uh, discussion. So um, please, we, we look forward to that at the end. Uh, we are timing our meeting segments. This will allow us to do our best to stay on time and uh, stay on course with the agenda. So. You may hear a prompt or uh, some of the conversations may uh, need to be wrapped up a little earlier than some, some may want to to allow us to respect those times. Um, and, and finally, just there are a few disclaimers um, that we want to raise and to, to make clear at the beginning of the meeting. The information presented tonight is for educational purposes only and is not intended to serve as a recommendation to buy or sell any of the securities that may be mentioned. You tonight of the and do not necessarily reflect those of better investing. Uh, investors should conduct their own research and analysis before making any investing decision. Um, and the securities discussed tonight may be held by any of the presenters in their own personal portfolio. Um, finally, the this presentation will contain or may contain uh, websites, products, services that are not specifically endorsed by or any of the presenters. Finally, the meeting is recorded and we'll be posting this meeting to our YouTube channel. There you can also find recordings of our past meetings for reference or for uh, curiosity for our members or guests. So having gone through that, just we'll move to tonight's agenda. Uh, tonight we do have a, a pretty packed uh, agenda, lots of exciting things going on. Uh, first, we'll hear from our treasurer, Reddy, uh, for the monthly report to evaluate the, the health and the overview of our current portfolio. Uh, John, our Vice President, will then present an education topic tonight, uh, Rule Number One by Phil Town, and we'll, we'll hear more about that. Tonight, we'll also have a stock study presented by Jane, Reddy, and Christopher in the fintech area. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll hear a few companies, um, from my understanding, so um, that, that'll be exciting. It doesn't look like there are any buy or sell 
uh, recommendations in the quarterly reports. So depending on time, we will uh, we may we may touch on some of those companies that are listed in the agenda. Uh, and then finally, we'll open the uh, meeting to questions and comments from guests and our visitors. So and move on to club business at that point. So having said all that, I will hand the uh, stage off to Reddy, our treasurer, for tonight's report. Uh, Thanks, Reddy. Yeah, where do I, I take the screen? Made... Screen, okay. I just yeah. you know. So okay, you I got have, it. have the prompt. Okay, I got the prompt. I, I accepted what happened. Uh, you're seeing the my screen? Uh, we you see, see folders. A, yeah, file folder with some of your reports in it, but we're not seeing the presentation or the, oh, the report. Okay, okay, okay. There you go. Bring Can we see it? Yep, yeah, yeah. perfect. Yeah. I wanted to show on the bigger screen, but okay. Okay, uh, this is the treasury report as I made yesterday. Um, deposited $1,300 for 13 members. Uh, I'm depositing the the day previous to the meeting day, so that, that way we know how much cash we have. Uh, bought none, and there is a limit order sitting right now for a one month, uh, that's pay X at 115 dollars per share uh, lowest it gotten is only uh, friday 115.73 uh, i looked at the all the data from yahoo price historical price data uh, open close uh, um, high low and uh, screened the data and found out that this is the lowest price so far and this is the period from last month, uh, our meeting time day, 24th to uh, Friday. Actually, I can change this. I checked today also. This is this should be 18th. Um, closing prices. So we did not, limit order did not go through. I assume that the limit order is only for one month, right? If it does not go through in one month, uh, does it expire? Uh, something that uh, we had to discuss. Uh, we did not sell anything. We did not pay out anything as of today. Cash balance is $7,631. And uh, we can buy some something today. Uh, and uh, we have some interesting stock study also. We can consider those too. Uh, the, the club portfolio heat map shows Vertex is still doing good and the largest one and uh, th there are no small issues fairly good size uh, we can we can somewhat uh, uh, redistribute but uh, this is the this is the balance we have uh, in the in terms of uh, portfolio gain loss uh, we have four uh, in the red and uh, all others are uh, positive um, this month we did not do much uh, stocks are going one day up and one next day down and uh, I, I will list these uh, high gainers and uh, high losers ne next slide uh, biggest winners uh, I'm listing on those which are gained 10% and over and last 10% and less and uh, this includes uh, Charles Schwab, Veritex Pharma, Facebook, Freeport, McMoran, and Qualys are in the positive green. And the, the ones in the red are Amazon, They're not big losses, but Disney and uh, indust innovative industrial properties and LGA Homes. Uh, so on overall, we are doing good. Um, this, this year, used to look bad but slowly improving you can see our uh, green bar is better than uh, s&p 500 and uh, total market index uh, but if you look over one year period of course we lost money um, this or oh, this is my note uh, highlighted in uh, greenish color uh, a lot of these are not updated. I request members to update it. Just uh, click 
click on the stock and uh, update the price at least quarterly of course you can review and uh, uh, reassess the uh, criteria but just once a month before the meeting please click the date uh, so that they are up to date okay uh, the uh, yes this is the portfolio review and then the next screen is uh, club assets uh, you can see this is the largest and we have a fair good amount of cash we can buy something and uh, all others are roughly um, above above are close to five percent these two are the low close to five percent um, here uh, these four sectors are still missing and um, this is the diversification chart uh, mega cap large cap mid cap and small cap each one we have a, a two 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 and mega cap we have four uh, these are the percentages small cap mid mid cap this did not change much from the last month the next slide shows uh, the four sectors are missing these are this is the health sector largest communication is also large all others are good good size and um, but we should consider in i i'm little i, I don't go too much into energy and uh, uh, utilities but consumer discretionary and industrials we can consider in the future to buy and next slide is uh, uh, industries uh, biotech is high internet is high and uh, we are fairly representing all other sectors in equal proportion uh, I think that's the last slide yeah that's my last slide on the treasury report. Okay, any questions? Hello. Okay, well, hi, thank you, Reddy. No, that's great. Um, no, appreciate that. So assuming there are no questions on anything presented by Reddy, um, we'll move on to our education topic for the night by John. Uh, John will be going over rule number one. So I'm going to hand over the screen to John whenever you're ready. Yes, thanks, Mina. Good evening, everyone, or afternoon, or morning, whatever it is for you. Um, so I'm going to cover part of a book uh, called Rule Number One. And I put invest in to make it more clear, but it's a book by Phil Town. And yeah, I'm going to cover this book covers four main things. He had a marketing thing he did for the book. It was their um, the um, meaning, moat, management, and margin of safety. I'm going to cover the moat and the margin of safety. The meaning is like uh, he thinks you should uh, have some kind of special reason to invest in the company. Like you believe in it, you like it, you support it. And management's about the management of the company, the leadership of the company, whether you think they're uh, honest and competent and so on and so forth. I'm not gonna cover those two, they're more qualitative. This is uh, gonna be the quantitative aspects of his book, The Moat and the Margin of Safety. And he's a Buffett disciple, kind of, yeah, Buffett, yeah, not really Graham, more Buffett. And um, so uh, I'm gonna cover that right now. So, let me get to the next, there we go. I got a kitten right on the table right here, so I may, may hear some noises when the kitten uh, hits the keyboard if he managed to get to it. Um, okay, so what is a moat? Warren Buffett described a moat this way. He kind of, I don't know if he coined the term or if he just kind of popularized it, but um, it's a quote from him. It is a durable competitive advantage that protects it, the company, from attack, like a moat protects a castle. So we all can get that metaphor down pretty easily. A moat around a castle protects it from attack and it's a defense against, uh, in this case, for companies, competition. You know, we're able to uh, maintain an advantage and beat the competition because of their moat. There's five moat types according to Phil Town. Brand, you pay more because you trust it, this company, for their product. 
seeker to patent that makes competition illegal, like a drug company, you know, a prescription drug company. Toll, exclusive controllable market, like a utility. Uh, they usually are limited in their profit they can take, but you do have exclusive controllable market. Switching, switching isn't worth the trouble. This was like Microsoft Office back in the day until Google made Google Drive free. But uh, Microsoft Office before Google Drive, I would say, was a switching cost. And also Windows, still for the, to this day, Windows is switching cost. And then price, products price to kill competition, think Amazon and Walmart. So they just took the low cost leader and just crush everyone because they have low prices. So those are the kind of modes we were looking at. Um, we're trying to find, but we want to make it so, okay, here we go. Mo, mo is the key to find a successful business. So from the book, it's a direct quote from the book, find a business with a wide moat is key to finding a successful business to own because a business with a wide moat is much more predictable for the next 20 years than a business with no moat. And that's what I should I should underline much more predictable because that's the, the key right there. Um, we want to we see a business with a moat. We think we can say, okay, they have a moat. Now we can say they're going to do okay or do well for the next 20 years, 10 years, five years, whatever. Uh, whereas if they just crushed it in the past three years, well, we'll see, we'll see how long you're supposed to see a good, uh, strong figures, but it's 10 years is what Phil wants to see. But um, if they just crushed it for a few years, doesn't necessarily mean they're gonna do so in the future, unless they have a new moat, you know, but. Um, okay, so determining whether a company has a moat, and Joanne, I'm not sure if you're keeping time already, but if you could let me know when I have past 10 minutes, and then I'll try to stop at 15 minutes if I can. But um, and leave five minutes for questions. There's 20 minutes for this presentation. So, so we're going to look at the five big numbers, the big five numbers: um, return on invested capital (ROIC), sales and/or revenue, growth rate (they're synonymous sales and revenue) in this case, at least. Uh, earnings per share (EPS) growth rate, equity or book value per share (BVPS) growth rate, free cash flow (FC) FCF or cash growth rate. So you want the return on invested capital, just the raw number. And then um, for the rest of these, you want the growth rate for the 10 years, like uh, year over year. And you can also calculate the, as they do in the SSG, the, the growth rate. We already know, we're familiar with better investing principles. We know that we already do this one right here and this one right here uh, in, our, uh, in our SSGs. They show that to us, for us, for the past 10 years. So they do the same thing there. These other ones, uh, I'm not sure if they show those. Maybe cash flow might be on there as well, but we just don't look at it too often. But um, but anyway, this is what Phil wants to do, is do this, look at these for the past 10 years. So um, we're looking for 10% or greater for each year of ROIC. We're looking also for 10% or greater year over year growth for in revenue, EPS, BBPS, and FCF. So we're looking at that. So I'm gonna look at a company that is pretty good as far as the financial, uh, picture go as far as their statements go you know um, the price might be a different issue but um and that's viva the ticker is v e e v and so we're going to look at that courtesy of bard um hopefully you can see this if not i can try to zoom in i'm not sure how the zooming in works on bard actually but um okay so i asked it to provide me with, just to get this pretty simply i could go to the financial statements and pull up the past three years and then go back Four years and pull the past three years and it's a lot of hassle so uh viva's or bard is a lot simpler for me so i just asked it to write the return on invested capital roic for v for the last 10 years and you can see that very well above over double over double uh, 10 percent uh, every year just crazy high back in the day and getting going down but um still very very high and um so that's fine. Um, rev rated revenue, growth rate of revenue or sales. And that's also doing quite well, above 10%, going down, but still above 10%. So you can see the trend is down, but still very high. So uh, it's probably maturing as a company is what's happening. Okay, earnings per share for V for the past 10 years, also very high and well above 10%, no problem there. Book value per share for the past 10 years. Okay, so it looks pretty high, over 10%, going down again, but maturing company. And finally, free cash flow. Now, so free cash flow, there is a 
down year below 10% the most recent year. And, um, but free cash flow, he says in the book, is kind of more, um, I don't know, it's a, uh, it fluctuates wildly sometimes, but otherwise great companies, you'll see free cash flow fluctuate pretty wildly. The growth rate of free cash flow, it might not, it might go negative in one year because it didn't grow at all, you know? And uh, so this is all positive and uh, no, no negative years. And so, it is growing. It did slow down considerably between 2022 and 2023, but still we're going to go forward with this company. I was looking for a company where it could achieve over 10% on every metric and it's hard to find, honestly. So um, I'm going to go back to my uh, presentation here and okay. Okay. So we think we found a company with a moat. And the point of this is that you can just go to your SSG and find companies with the EPS and the revenue going up and up and to the right and up straight and parallel. And um, then look at the other factors on BARD or whatever you want to use and find these companies. And you don't have to know that a company has a moat. Like we know Microsoft has a moat. We know, we know Amazon has that price moat. We know Pfizer has a drug moat for certain prescriptions, you know. Uh, we don't need to know the company. We can just look at the companies in the SP 500 or in the Russell 2000 and just pull them up and see how they're doing. And that might help us to backdoor into a moat. So um, that's kind of, I, I think probably most of you didn't know what, that Viva existed if you're listening to this um, or watching this, but um, maybe you did. But uh, it's, a, it's a company that has a moat most likely according to these quantitative metrics. So now let's see if it's attractively priced. Okay, so price and intrinsic value. Price is what a stock, a business is selling for today. So that's like, you know, what you can buy, you can go to the go to the Schwab and buy it for. Intrinsic value, what the business is actually worth. So price and intrinsic value are often the same, but sometimes they are different. So some, a lot of the time the market is efficient, as they like to say, but uh, sometimes it's not. And uh, that's when we try to buy or sell. Robo investors buy when the price is a great deal below the intrinsic value and sell when the price is a great deal above the intrinsic value. So that's what uh, Rural Phil tries to do is try to wait. He just, he waits and he buys, he waits and he sells. And um, he does it when it's it's either cheap or expensive. He cheap when he buys and expensive when he sells. Okay, how to find intrinsic value. We need four items, current earnings per share, trailing 12 months, current earnings per share, Estimated future EPS growth rate. We saw the past e the, pa the EPS growth rate from the past. We need the future EPS growth rate now. We also need the estimated future price to earnings per share ratio. So a lot of this is similar to SSG as well. You can also see that as well in the second tab. Uh, minimum acceptable rate of return from this investment. We need that. We need to pick that as well for ourselves. So we take current earnings, estimate what they'll be in 10 years. Um, that's number two. Estimate stock price in 10 years. You get that from multiplying number two by number three. Compared to our minimum rate of return, and we just kind of back to the minimum rate of return that we have, and you'll see that in a second here. But that's the summary of what we're doing. Ten, ten more minutes. Uh, okay. Oh, cool. Great. I'm good. <laughs> All right. So, uh, calculate intrinsic value. V. Uh, okay. 20, 12 months EPS. I got this from the. I think there's not been a new financial statement since uh, I got this a couple of days ago. So it's three dollars and nineteen cents earnings per share. Estimated future EPS growth rate. You compare the book, Phil's method, compare the book value per share to analyst estimate and take the more conservative number, which is 20%. So you look at, he, he says, and I don't question this, and I can, I can, I can, I don't know if I can answer, I don't know if I can answer a question. You have to probably read the book to, 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 ask, to answer the question of why he uses book value per share. He wants to see the equity of the company growing. And, you know, there's, there's assets, there's liabilities, and there's equity. He wants to see the equity of the company growing. He wants to base our future earnings per share on the book value per share in the past. So you can see it's going down. So let's not, let's not go somewhere too high, but I can pick 24, we'll, we'll pick 24, that's fine. But then we got the uh, analyst estimate from Zach's. Um, and I went in here through the SSG, next five years is 20% for EPS. So um, we'll go with the more conservative figure, the lower figure is what that means, and that's 20%. And it's the next five years, it could be even lower for the next 10 years total, you know, um, but we'll pick 20% and just go with that. And um, let's uh, try to make this bigger. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna take a conservative number and now estimated future 
price to earnings ratio. The rule of thumb that he uses to keep it simple is to double the EPS growth rate that you just picked, 20%. So that's 40%. And now in a, or 40, I guess not 40, I should have believed it, did not have a percent there, it's 40. But uh, you know, we in, in better investing, we try to default to no more than 30, but that's different than this. This is a book called Rule One Investing or Rule One, uh, better investing is better investing. So it's different. So they just he just doubles the EPS growth rate, which would be 40, not percent. Uh, the Minnesota rate of return is defaulted at 15%. That's what you want to receive, that's what you want to earn on this investment. So, um, and now we're going to get to some more rule of thumb. A lot of you probably have heard of the rule of 72. And we're going to look at the future market price, is what we're trying to find with this slide here. So to find EPS in 10 years, yeah, I don't know why this works. I don't think he explains it in the book either. Uh, take the EPS rate and divide by 72. So that's 72, or actually take 72 and divide by the EPS rate is what I meant to say. That 72 divided by 20 equals 3.6. It will take 3.6 years to double at 20% EPS growth rate. It will take double again in 7.2 years and double again in 10.6 years. You just, you know, multiply by three essentially. Future EPS is 3.919 times eight, which is three doubles equals 25.52. And that's that's looking at 10.6 per the rule of 72. So I'll go down to future EPS of 24, just as a kind of a, just an estimate for 10 years. And you could find this exactly with a, with a financial calculator, but uh, we're just trying to make this easier. And um, hopefully that it was easier than busting out the financial calculator. So the future market price is future EPS 24 times future PE 40. It's what we've estimated from the prior slide. So $960 stock price. So that's future splits was probably if that's if that turns out to be true, future splits of the stock will make the numbers appear smaller. They're going to split the stock. They're not going to be like um, well, like they could be like Amazon and Google have been and have kept it, kept their price really high, but they'll probably split the stock and uh, it'll be a lower price, but just same real price, so lower you know, per share price, but same real price. So, uh, and last slide, or the second to last slide, intrinsic value and margin of safety. Now we demand our 50% rate of return. Again, you use the rule of 72. It says that the stock will double roughly every 15 years, every five years at a 15% rate. So that's 72 divided by five is 14.4. Yeah. So, uh, okay. Huh? That means in 10 years, it will double twice. So really? pretty much in 10 years, it will double twice. So. Yeah, we'll discount go, 10 years at 50 percent go off someone talking yeah okay to discount 10 years at 15 percent we simply divide by two twice or divide by four once which is what that means right so 960 divided by four equals 240. so that's the intrinsic value according to this method uh looking at just the numbers uh 240 dollars per share so the margin of safety is half the intrinsic value 120. so that's he gets really conservative and wants to buy at a great deal. So his, his what he buys at is half the market, the intrinsic value, 120, which he calls the margin of safety price. So that's a prime buying price. And you can probably even, you could probably go you know, up by 1.5 to 360, and that'd be a prime selling price at the current financial figures. So I'm gonna go out of there and go to V right now. It's at 208.19 as of, to, as of today, after today's trading. So it's below intrinsic value, but uh, above margin of safety. So Phil would just keep it, keep an eye on it for sure. Strong company, keep an eye on it. And if it fell to 120, he'd reevaluate after every quarterly report and he'd um, keep an eye on it. And if it fell to 120, he'd buy. And if it, that's pretty much it. <laughs> or if it fell to the adjusted price he got, he would buy. You know? And uh, here's the book. He has other stuff in there. It's on Amazon and, um, Pretty pretty good writer, uh, you know, very cloak, very uh, down to earth, you know, salt of the earth kind of writing style, and uh, pretty good book. So uh, recommend checking it out just for fun. And uh, that's pretty much all I got. Does anyone have any questions? I'm going to go over something again because I went too fast. If it's possible. We, we have like four minutes for questions, so we have to do the stock study. Thank that was great, John. Do, okay. do you enjoy the book? 
I used it to buy Viva three years ago, oh. though. <laughs> <laughs> but look at look at their stock their stock their stock their stock price. It's gone. It went up way up. I bought it. I don't know when I bought it. I bought that book in whatever it was. Uh, they told me when I bought the book, January 20, 2020. And then COVID happened, and I think I maybe bought right around here or so, and sold later on when it dipped a little bit. But anyway, it was uh, it, I was looking at Viva back then, and I was like, wow. This is the, the only real danger of this company is that they're they're someone's cooking the books because it looks so good. It's like it's just the, the numbers are just so good. They're still good. The sure as the state the financial statements go, you know. But anyway, John, have you uh, uh, you've done? I think you've done uh, education topic in the past on discounted cash flow. Was that you or that was uh, not me? It was. Um, <laughs> Matt, yeah. Matt. Matt. Oh, okay. I'm just wondering, like, how this um, quick formula compares to this. Yeah, I think this kind of. I think you're you're correct, and I think if you're asking, if you're kind of, I think it's this is a simplified, very simplified version of this kind of cash flow. I I saw a blog that told that I researched the the book after I read it, and someone on a blog said, yeah, this is like a simplified version of DCF, uh, DCFA, but um. So that's probably what he's doing. He's cheap. He's keeping it simple for the layperson. Right. What he's doing. But that that's quite the discount at fifty percent. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's he wants to not lose money. Rule number one. I meant to, forgot to mention that. Rule number one is a Buffett quote. He says, "Rule number one is never lose money. Rule number two is don't forget rule number one." <laughs> so that's right. like his whole aphorism that he wants to throw out there but uh yeah so he not he doesn't want to lose money so he wants to only buy when it's yeah very discounted to the intrinsic value in his in his estimation That's okay great. well yeah. leave more time for jane and chris and freddie um jane do you want to give you the, the screen uh, I think Chris will do the industry report first, so we okay. give screen okay. to him first. I'll pass. Um, can everyone see the screen? Yeah. Yes. That's okay. good. Yeah. Um. So today I'll be talking about the fintech industry. Um. But let us first have a disclaimer. So the disclaimer is that PayPal is technically classified under the financial service sector and under the credit services industry. And Fiserv is classified under the technology sector and the information technology services industry. However, they both are kind of considered as FinTech companies as they provide technologies that like enables financial institutions. So what is fintech? So fintech refers to the integration of technology into offerings by financial services companies to improve their use and delivery to co consumers. So it primarily works by unbundling offerings by such firms and creating new markets for them. So examples of fintech applications include robo advisors, payment apps, peer-to-peer -peer lending apps, investment apps, crypto apps, among others. So who are the fintech users? So fintech users are kind of classified into like these four groups, which are business to business, um, client of B2B banks, um, business to consumer for small businesses, as well as consumers. So examples of FinTech, as I mentioned before, um, we can see here. Um, and yeah, and then so what is kind of the future of FinTech? So the future of FinTech, um, so financial technology revenues are project projected to grow sixfold from 245 billion to 1.5 trillion by 20, 2030, which is in seven years. And the fintech sector, which currently holds a 2% share of the 12.5 trillion in global financial services revenue, is estimated to grow up to 7% of which banking fintechs are expected to constitute almost 25% of all banking valuations worldwide by 2030. And this is from the Boston Consulting Group, they did a study on this. Um, okay. So yeah, so now kind of going back to the disclaimer. So what is credit services and why is PayPal more of a fintech company? So credit services is where companies that extend credit and make loans to individuals and business enterprises through credit cards, installment loans, student loans, 
business loans and other consumer and business credit in instruments. And PayPal does have credit cards, but they're but one of the, like, their defining products, as well as like what everyone knows them by, is their digital payment platform, which makes financial transactions easier than ever. And so, yeah, so how do we? So why is Fiserv a competitor? So Fiserv is a technology company which provides technology services to many financial institutions. The company provides payment and mobile banking systems, accounting processing systems, and electronic payments products and services. Um, Right. And kind of the way that we kind of came into deciding that five service is a competitor is that there were there's like some direct competitors of PayPal, such as like Zelle, where it's also like a peer to peer payment app, as well as like something like Venmo, right, which is PayPal does own. Um, and yeah, but like, and also like Square, but a lot of these companies they just don't have kind of like the same, um, I guess, like fundamentals as Fiserv. And or like other companies are also like not, not um, on the market or like they they haven't IPO'd yet. So this is why we kind of decided that Pfizer is a serial competitor for us to, to um, study. And yeah, and I guess I'll hand it off to either Reddy and Jane. Thank you, Pete. Thank you, Chris. So if it's okay with Reddy, shall I present PayPal first? Joanne, you can give me the screen. Okay, you can go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Jen. Okay, thank you. Joanne, can give me the screen, please. Can you see? Uh, my screen now. Yes. Yes. If you could um, enlarge it, that would, that would be nice. Enlarge it. Okay. Uh, there's there's two two on the screen. Oh, two. Right? Oh, two on the screen. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Thank you. Sure. Okay, I think PayPal is very a popular name in the payment, uh, mobile payment, digital payment platform. It's a two-sided financial technology platform um, that facilitates digital and mobile payments. And why we picked PayPal? Because I personally invested in it, and it's been a great company, and um, which I will show you. And, uh, and the price is really, really depressed right now because of several reasons, which we will go over later. And then um, as uh, Chris mentioned, it's actually in, in financial service industry and credit services, but this industry is also ranked highly. So I think it's worthwhile of looking at PayPal. And uh, PayPal uh, have two sides uh, services. PayPal consumer platform, which I will not go into detail. They have a lot of uh, products, provide a lot of um, uh, uh, capabilities to the uh, consumers. And um, they, yeah. within the PayPal app, user can transfer money in a variety of channels to a variety of end users using the funding sources of their choice. That's the best part. And Secondly, PayPal also serves merchants, and it has a lot of uh, solutions to enable businesses and support them uh, both offline and online uh, checkout solutions. And these are all the products that PayPal uh, provide, uh, just to name a few. And also, PayPal manage help them to manage the business back end, and uh, so they provide. Uh, business loan, they provide inventory management and uh, invoicing even and payout. So it really engage the customer through marketing tools and also PayPal merchants only need to integrate once with PayPal to gain access to the company's uh, all kinds of products. And then they can scale as their needs grow, you know, when their business grow. So PayPal uh, has developed a network of both merchants and cons consumers early on 
when the e-commerce first uh, started. And so uh, it does have a narrow mode, not as wide as we wish, but it does has a narrow mode. And I think because of his its brain, I think just now uh, we we went over his its brain is really really popular, and uh, it provides capability to merchants and once for all, just as we mentioned. So it's it's not that feasible to switch if they once they connect with PayPal. Also, the price they provide um, the. Uh, uh, the, the credit even to to the business and to the consumer they can pay buy now and pay later and the business uh, loan to uh, merchants so all this um, reason I think PayPal does maintain a narrow mode and PayPal has a very good relationship with both sides right merchants and consumers so that give them the edge in in uh, combating the fraud if there's any so it really is a value partner on both sides. And um, so, so as, you, as we all have experience using PayPal, um, uh, and I was so surprised when I was booking for my uh, family trip uh, for next January 2024, and we just booked a small hotel in a, in a resort, Nozawa Resort in Japan. And I was so surprised. I, I, I got this email with the PayPal link to pay. So PayPal is actually everywhere, in, in Japan, in a lot of countries. So it, not only in US, not only in Europe, but it's also in Asia. So with all these dynamics in place, PayPal actually had 435 million active accounts at the end of last year. But on the downside, PayPal uh, market position uh, could be challenged over the long run. You probably have read some articles uh, talking about this, and some of the large financial institutions or credit card companies they try to develop their own in-house digital wallet, and also traditional point of sale acquirers are building out their online capabilities. On the consumer side as well, services such as uh, Pay, Apple Pay, Google Pay, you know, really represent competition, but However, given the company's strong, loyal brand recognition and global reach that we just mentioned, and PayPal, we believe, would retain significant market share. And especially, we are not talking about buying PayPal at the regular price. We are looking at buying PayPal at the discounted price now. And it's a, it's a, it's a company with try record. So I want to show you. Uh, uh, Baku, because this is a, a, a tool that we use and we thank uh, Baku, Lala for this. And um, we look at PayPal for the past three, 10 years, um, uh, financial ratios. And for the first three, which are the most important, then we look at uh, the first three and you, you probably see that, oh, PayPal doesn't have as high score for the first three. But if you look at closely, yes, for the any any uh, year before 2021, yes, it doesn't really meet the requirement of 15% uh, for ROE return on equity. And for the for the definition, you can see here. So it doesn't really meet the requirement before 2018. However, if you look at the this past five years, the most recent five years, PayPal is doing fine, especially this year. Last year, they are not doing quite well, but this year they are really picking up. So if you consider this, it's on the up, you know, upward trend for both ROE and ROIC and for you know, free cash flow, no problem. You know, it's 100% um, uh, meeting the requirement. So with this consideration, we still look at the other seven ratios. And the other seven ratios, it looks really good. I mean, you can see that even for this uh, uh, this year, currently the, the free cash flow and the gross margin rate, it's not quite yet, but however, it's very close to what we are hoping for. So we will consider this as meeting the requirement. And also uh, the operating, operating margin and net margin, you know, this 
last year, as we mentioned, last year they have some struggle uh, in the second quarter, but then they are still doing okay and in terms of you know uh, the criteria that we are looking at. So 14.7 is like only slightly shy of 15%. So this we will consider is really close enough. However, the financial leverage is that all across 10 years, it's not meeting the requirement. So we look at, you know, why is that so? So I look at uh, the, okay, we, we look at the return on asset first. Okay, the return on asset is also not meeting the requirement of 8% or above. Then uh, we look at why is that so? The return on asset, basically the, the formula is net income uh, divided by total asset. So we take a look at what PayPal have, return on asset, uh, on equity, you know, on equity and asset, it's a similar thing. And uh, it's currently sitting at, the this current quarter is sitting at 20.7%. The industry average is only 10.6%. The Pfizer and the other company that we are looking at, the, the peers, let me show you. Yeah, this is the return asset. The 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 financial industry is 1.1 percent. The Pfizer we are looking at is 3.3 percent, and uh, and PayPal is actually current the current year is like 5.3 percent for return asset. And we if we look at the 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 figure that we have on the return on equity, uh, again. Uh, you, you see that PayPal is way over the industry average, and uh, I know the Visa and Mastercard they are listed as peers for PayPal because they are in the credit card in industry. But it's in fact it's not. I mean, as Chris mentioned, it's not similar to PayPal. So for a return on equity, I will look at the industry average, and we look at the peers. So PayPal is actually doing uh, quite well compared to the peers. So with that, and the most important thing is the financial leverage. The financial leverage that PayPal earlier we show. Yeah, the financial leverage that PayPal has that, you know, you know, a lot of years they have above three, but we are hoping that it's under two. So with that, we look at it industry average as well. So the global payment landscape is uh, really evolving. So PayPal has continued to make strides on product development and enhanced services capability for its expanding customer base. So, um, so, uh, so for example, PayPal introduced in-store tap to pay functionality in some locations and also launched crypto transfers between PayPal and other wallets and further expand its buy now and pay later offerings. And so the so we believe the mobile and digital transaction are likely to gain further traction on a global scale, you know, as technology continue to to really uh, uh, expand. So so we go back to the PayPal's um, uh, the return on equity, uh, I think we already mentioned, and then the 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 the, le the financial leverage that we are looking at. So, oh, the financial leverage, the for the financial leverage that uh, Baku using is total assets over shareholders equity. But for the the fintech, the 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 data I found on the on the on the uh, Finbox Data Explorer, they have this uh, debt to capital ratio. It's a similar thing. It's just the reverse. So we look at the debt to capital ratio. PayPal is actually uh, compared to industry uh, average is really much lower than the industry average, even though it does provide the the, the credit to the merchants. And for Visa and Mastercard, it's, it's also much higher than. PayPal and Pfizer that we will look at is it's even higher. So for this reason, I think we we consider PayPal 
to be able to meet the uh, requirement for financial leverage. And um, so if we add this 10, 10 uh, score to 66, it will give us 76. And then if we consider this four as, uh, you know, barely meeting the requirement, so it would bring us our, our score up to 80. So this is a, a, a tool. Baku's uh, ratio is a very good tool for us to really look at uh, whether PayPal is a company worthwhile of studying. And we have uh, proven so that PayPal is a company that we should be looking at. So uh, sorry for jumping back and forth. Um, so PayPal uh, <clears throat> have already meet all the requirements and that we mentioned. And, uh, and so we decided that we should look at further. So we did a, a SSG study on PayPal. And PayPal company, uh, PayPal has all this uh, uh, sales growth rate over the past five years, earning per share growth rate, and compare as compared to industry, is really much, much higher. And the current P ratio we will see later is only 17 versus industry is 21. All right, so we look at PayPal's uh, SSG and uh, so PayPal, uh, we chose 6% as a sales growth rate because we want to be conservative, even though the sales uh, uh, estimate for consensus uh, is, is more than 6%, 7%, yeah. So if you look at the sales growth rate for PayPal, the, uh, the management is projecting for next year is 8%, value line is 7%. Goldman Sachs is 7.1%. The analyst uh, consensus that we look at is 8.5%. So to be conservative, 8.5%. So to be conservative, we pick 6%. And with that, we do a preferred procedure. And then we have um, been conservative to change the, the pre-tax profit ratio to 14%. And pretty much, uh, you know, with the taxes, we look at the previous tax we chose 26%. So with this minor adjustment, we come up with a 10% uh, earning per share growth rate. And with that, we we look at the uh, the estimated high price. And uh, with the high price, we chose we have uh, taken out some outliers for uh, two years over the past 10 uh, five years, and we uh, look at the average. Uh, PE is 60.8, and because of the fact that uh, it's it's always uh, better to be conservative, so I take a 10% uh, of that to come up with 55, and the average uh, low PE is 31, so we take a 10% of that to come up with 28, and then with the 10% earning per share growth rate, then we have 3.37 in five years, so we. Uh, arrive at $185 as the estimated price in five years. And for the low price, I calculated according to 28 PE and then the current last year, the end of last year, 2.09, I come up with 58.5, but I just want to be conservative because the reason uh, 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 low uh, market low is 57.3. Yeah, the reason market low is 57.3. So I, I even go even more conservative to take a 10% uh, of that, which is 51.6. So with the, the low price of 51.6 and the high price of 185, we have derived at um, a, a upside and downside ratio of 13.21. This is based on the uh, the price that is on September 8th when I did this. So if we refresh for uh, today's price, it's still quite a high upside and downside ratio, I believe. 
excuse me, loading. Okay, anyway, um, so it, it should be slightly lower than 13 uh, to 1, just because today's price is uh, higher, slightly higher than Yeah, today's price for PayPal is 62.9, almost 63. So when I did the study, it was like $61. So it's $2, $2 less at the time. So the, the upside and downside ratio is 13 to 1. So now with that increment uh, slightly, then you should bring it down to like probably 11. But I cannot, I couldn't refresh. I can try again. Okay, anyway, never mind. Okay, so we go back to the first call. And so we, I mean, if you look at the the earning per share, I, I arrived at earning per share of 10% growth rate. And then if you look at the management uh, projection, it's actually 20%. And the value line has 12%. And Goldman Sachs is even more optimistic of 15%. And the end of this consensus is 18.5 that we saw earlier on SHG. So the projected high PE that we use is 55 and projected low price that we are being very conservative to, to, to take a, 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 you know, to take a, a, a 10% off the, uh, the recent market low to come up with 51.6. So we have been very, very conservative in doing our SSG. Of course, SSG is not the only factor that we determine. And um, we also look at other, we are the, our own analysts, but we also consider other analysts, uh, cons, you know, their, their analysis and their consideration. So the target price that Value Line has for uh, pay, PayPal is 84 at the middle point, you know, it's 18 months, you know, uh, but the midpoint is 84, uh, almost uh, at 89, and morning star is 135. It's even so uh, more, so much more, uh, uh, so much more optimistic. So our um, our our recommendation is to buy PayPal because we believe that PayPal consumer brain has command a very high level of trust and it continue to invest in value added futures. And I think you should support PayPal's uh, competitive position. And PayPal has been trying very hard to uh, enhance their operating expense uh, efficiency. And so PayPal is positioned for a strong performance. When e-commerce uh, coming back to the historical uh, double digit uh, percent growth rate. Specifically, PayPal, as we mentioned, that it does have struggle in 2022. Last year, yeah, last year, starting 2022 last year. But its uh, total payment volume and total uh, active accounts continue to grow. So it did dip into the red last year, uh, 2022 quarter two. And, and report their loss. But very quickly, the management recuperate and then uh, and, and bring the company back to the black in, in the third quarter. So, so that's the only quarter that has a loss. And so PayPal is very resilient. And I believe that it will continue. It's a, it's a company with a very good track record. And I believe it will continue to perform. And even with the, all this competition, it's actually uh, doing very hard to uh, to to maintain its uh, position, its a market uh, leader position, and also it taking all kinds of uh, uh, action to address underperformance. Because in that particular quarter, that they have lost because they have some uh, 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 business loan uh, exposure. So PayPal has. Uh, reduce its receivable exposure. So on June uh, this year, 
they have uh, announced to sell substantially all its existing and future European buy now and pay later loans to KKR. So we believe this action is very uh, a positive uh, move and, uh, and the deal will be closed in the second half of this year and it will generate 1.8 billion in, in sales proceeds. So PayPal reiterate the uh, 2023 guidance of free cash flow of about 5 billion. And this, uh, uh, this will give them continuing capability to uh, do uh, merger acquisition. And uh, the, the, they have reduced uh, whatever the risk they have uh, already perceived. And the other overhang over the share price is that the current CEO uh, has announced to retire at the beginning of this year. And this CEO uh, has been doing a good job, but then uh, because he retired and they, they need to find a, a replacement, right? So they have taken so many months to find one. And finally, they have found one uh, this, this month. So they announced uh, Alex. Alex is from, uh, Mr. Chris is from uh, Intuit. And Intuit has uh, has served. Uh, he has served at that company for over 19 years, and he was responsible for Intuit small business and self employee group, which generate more than 50% of Intuit's revenue. So he does have a lot of experience in creating uh, new products, and he is a a, a, a goal driven person. And we view the appointment of Mr. Chris as a positive and because PayPal will really continue to benefit from his experience. So this overhang over this uh, uh, share price is also taken off. So we believe that PayPal is going to do uh, continuously and with the price that we are looking at. Oh, never mind. So with the price that we are looking at, uh, like $62, yeah, now it's $62 today. And uh, and the upside and downside ratio is 13 or even 12, let's say 12 to one. And the average, based on the average uh, PE, the projected return per year is 18%. Even with so conservative uh, uh, earning per share growth rate and sales growth rate, and if we are looking at high PE, uh, total return will be 20, almost 25%. So I think with this quality company and uh, with its really depressed price, I think we should really consider buying PayPal. And that concludes my uh, presentation. Any question? Very, very thorough. The, yeah. the, the, the only question I have is uh, okay. just again the um, the competitive landscape. Uh, yes. Uh, if you could sort of speak a little bit about that, because there's all these payment companies that are spreading. Um, the competitive landscape, because we all know that the PayPal is facing uh, competition from both sides, right? But then uh, we we really cannot foresee the future. But what we know is that PayPal is really resilient in the past. And, and they did have some challenges in the past, but they recuperate really quickly. And they, they are an action-proven uh, company. Whenever they see uh, something that is not quite right, they take action right away to correct that. So we can see you know, the management is really proactive in uh, handling their challenges. And we can see that the, 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 the new CEO, Mr. Chris, has ample experience of uh, you know, creating new revenue for uh, his past employer and will continue to do so for PayPal. So we really don't have a crystal uh, ball to say, well, what is gonna happen to their competition. But PayPal does have the reputation of coming out with new products and PayPal 
does have the products that are so easy to use oh. and PayPal has global reach and PayPal is gonna develop under developed regions. So it, it's, it has the presence there, but I'm sure that it will continue to increase its market share, not only in US, but globally. The, who owns Hello? uh Vemo? Uh Vemo, Vemo is also owned by PayPal. Oh PayPal. really? I have yeah. noticed Hello. people using you know United States people use the Vemo far more uh, frequent than PayPal. I used to use PayPal but mostly mostly now Vemo. Oh I did not know that. Okay. That's good too. Yeah, and also Vemo, if I remember correctly, they have this deal with uh, Amazon. So they uh, they continue to establish relationship with different merchants and platforms. Uh, so PayPal has a, a mode, even though it's narrow, but the the brain is is really, you know, the loyalty is there because it's so easy to use and it's really, you know, user friendly. And, um, and uh, I don't know about what you think, you know, the future, we can, we can discuss further, but I just think that we do know there are some challenges, but uh, PayPal at this point of time, the price, it just, it's just unimaginable. And, um, you know, we, we, we want to buy a quality company, you know, with a good price. That would be the, the investment that we are looking for. And we will not just go for any company. We have to look at the, the quality of the company in the past five to 10 years. And we have proven that PayPal is such a company and it, it has such a, a depressed price. And we don't know the future, but based on these two, that we think it's worthwhile considering investment oh. in PayPal. Can PayPal use in China? Yes. I mean, I, 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 I you know, PayPal, I, I don't really see it in China, but when we go overseas, that anywhere that we can use PayPal. But in China, we don't have PayPal. I think uh, China, we have WeChat Pay, we have Alipay. These are the two uh, uh, players. I don't think Chinese government is, uh, is uh, allowing uh, overseas company in this, in this in industry. Not yet. Not yet. Mm -hmm. Not yet. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jane. Uh, yeah, Jane, yeah, I'm coming. Oh. Jane. Jane. Yes. Uh, yes. You, yeah. You know, I heard a couple of years ago. I heard one of the reasons why merchants were moving away from PayPal was because they were charging too much. Uh, the merchants and they were going for uh, GoDaddy, other payment systems. So have they kind of fixed that? They are charging too much. Yeah, um, I, I do know mm. that PayPal has been constantly advise, uh, revising their pricing, okay. so they have been very quite lenient. So that's why they came up with the the product that you know the the pay buy now and pay later yeah. to the consumer, and they also provide business loan to the customer. I mean to the merchant. So I think they are in terms of pricing, they are they are trying to 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 be user friendly so okay. i don't know about that yeah yeah I mean, this this was many a number of years ago i see yeah Jane, we have a question from the audience it sure. says any paypal corporate discussion about initiating a dividend initiating a dividend that yeah. i don't know but currently it's not paying dividend yet okay Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's paid I'm looking at SSG. I realized that you may want to change the um, yes. change the uh, PE because right now your upside down ratio is like a thirteen to what to one. Yeah. 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 You can. Yeah. I'm sure even if you lower it, probably still in a buy. I don't mm -hmm. know. Yeah. It definitely Jane. will be because I'm being very conservative already. Yes. Yeah. No, the, P, the, the PE. Okay. No, the PE, yeah, the PE. PE uh, high PE looks too high. Okay. Yeah. A high PE is uh, 55. You think too high? 
Duhai. No, I understand you are comparing looking at the historical, right? Yeah. So right now that gives you upside down ratio to 13 to, okay, I, I lost your screen. I'm looking uh 13 to one something. So if you change the P, I don't know, let's just say, even if you go to 30, what does that give you? Oh, okay. I to, okay. I have to leave the meeting soon. Okay. Yeah. So shall we have ready? I mean, this is any question. I, I think you oh. have uh, uh, one more point. question. Yes, please. Uh, question that, uh, from a customer's perspective. Uh, why would you, as a customer, or why would you prefer pay PayPal versus a credit card? Uh, credit card has the uh, has protection. You know, up to what is it, thirty days? Interrupt right now. Well, we'll discuss this um, after Reddy gives his presentation because he has to leave. So oh, sure. we hold on to that. That's now. a good question. Hold on to that question. Yeah. Reddy, are you ready to present? Yes. Okay. Okay. Give me control of the screen. Okay. Okay. Um, I will present the Pfizer. Pfizer is a well-established company. Uh, has been growing in the re uh, acquisition of major divisions. Pfizer. We, Fi, Pfizer also makes uh, their business in the payment and financial services, but mostly they provide the technology to the all these companies. Uh, they have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six uh, uh, sub subgroups in the, in the Pfizer company. Uh, one acceptance group provides the point of sale, merchant, and acquiring and digital commerce services, mobile payments, security and fraud protection products. Uh, another division called Carrot is omni-channel commerce solutions. I don't know the details about these um, the, uh, online the payment services. Uh, Clover provides cloud-based point of sale and business management. Point of sale is now very popular, used in every business. Uh, where you go and you put the card in there and it uh, um, um, transfers the money back and forth. Clover Connect is another division. Um, it supplies us, uh, independent software vendors platform. The fintech segment offers customer deposits and loan accounts, manager, gen, general ledgers, and, and uh, um, information files. And then the payments division uh, offers uh, card transactions, debit card, uh, pre prepaid cards, social sec security and fraud protection products, and print services, and various other network services, account to account transfer, uh, and a lot of. Uh, the payment services. Uh, Pfizer is a growth company. It has acquired several major um, the uh, companies and integrated it. And uh, both it has, but it has still organic growth and uh, acquisition growth also. Um, the the historical um, five-year growth data sales is growing 31% close to, and uh, EPS. By the way, I use non-gap uh, growth because there are a lot of one-time adjustments. Non-gap gra gap growth for last five years is about 20%. And um, uh, pre-tax profit is uh, decent, 18.4. And uh, all other return on assets, the, all these ratios are good uh, and steady. Uh, I will show you in later in the graph. And uh, uh, the project, the the I am very conservative in, in uh, using our production, the projection, future projections. I generally go by value line because value line it, it reflects truly non-gap and removes all the one-time corrections. Uh, I chose uh, sales of 7% and the reason is uh, in the, the consensus estimate is like 12%. Uh, Morningstar is uh, close to 7%. Value line is 9%. And other sources uh, seven and a half, so I choose seven. And member sentimental ratio, sentiment membership sentiment 
in BI is also about eight and a half percent. I chose uh, projected annual growth as eight um, percent because uh, this is again very conservative. Um, value line estimate is nine and a half percent, and the BI member sentiment estimate is uh, uh, sales growth. Uh, is the EPS growth is higher. I think this is by mistake. I put a sales growth. Other sources uh, seven to twelve percent, and uh, the analyst consensus estimates are twelve, uh, ranging from twelve percent, nine percent, fourteen percent, and thirteen. So mine is a very conservative number because I want to be careful. I will show you mention the reason. Uh, projected uh, high uh, PE is 20, and uh, this is uh, actually a very conservative number. And projected low price is 98. I will. This is the 80% of the current value. Uh, the lowest is the last 52 weeks is close to some 92 or so. And my recommendation is uh, uh, current price buy. And if we if we don't have it, and if we have if we have it, uh, um, the recommendation is uh, uh, watch if we already have it. And the pros are um, the sales have grown 17% uh, over two years, 9%. Recent NS growth is 28%, and profit margins are trending up and steady. Return on equity is strong and uh, it is voted as Times Magazine's world's best company in 2023. Fintech, this is one of the top Fintech 100 companies. Jack's recommendation is hold. Pfizer has made several large acquisitions and integrated. Okay, this is the first cut. Um, buckles ratios, these are uh, close to making 75%. Uh, and uh, but these I am not sure how much effect non using non gap data will have on these ratios, but uh, uh, this is close to making 75 percent. Uh, the, the similar to PayPal and the next one is uh, graph. Uh, this is this is Pfizer last year. You can see everything is down and from the over one year it is nicely uh, growing and very constant uptrend. Uh, just for comparison, I put a PayPal. PayPal went way down from 300 to 60. I do not know the details. I did not read enough about the what happened here, but it's not coming back up uh, last one year. And this is the comparison of the two on the same graph percentage ratios. Uh, this is the uh, this is the um, PayPal and this is the um, for a one year period, uh, no, this is three year period. This is the um, Pfizer. And these are the buck buckles ratios. I, I have a better graph. Uh, where are the buckles? Okay, these are the, these are the, um, uh, no, let me, let me explain the, the this one first. Um, this is in a, the non-gap EPS and you can see non-gap EPS is, nice and steady and uh, I chose conservative numbers and still predicted uh, the actual um, pro projection of this line will be much higher. Uh, this you can see that the high ratios are around 22, 23, 24. I used 20 to be very conservative and the, the EPS projection is also very conservative and 190 is close to um, value line high price projected five years from now. They have same time span and uh, low price is uh, predicted is 90, but uh, last uh, several uh, last 52 weeks is uh, 891 or so. And I chose 98 as uh, uh 80 percent of the current price current price is 121 and uh, now it, it just makes uh, the buy buy category but with using a lot of conservative assumptions 
and uh, this is the this is the this is the, finally this is the uh, Jane asking me to do the PERT for only these two companies. You can see that the the problem I have I do not understand is um, PayPal uh, the is uh, um, EPS and sales and uh, is very erratic and the graph is very er erratic as you see here. Uh, where is the graph? Yeah, this this graph is very erratic. I do not know un understand the details. So, um, but th this is very steady compared to this one. Um, so my recommendation is to consider Pfizer. Pfizer is a very more steady company. Okay, that concludes my presentation. Any questions? I I lost some money in pay X so, or uh, year year two years, but <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Reddy. That was that was uh, very good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Reddy. Um, Reddy. So the PayPal graph. Um, SSG looks better than the Pfizer. I am not sure if she, if uh, Jane used uh, which which graph the EPS graph. This one is non-gapped. It looks very nice and steady. I guess. I mean, Jane. Uh, I remember sales what earnings. Huh? You, the EPS looks so we are looking at all three graphs. You have this uh, PDF uh, very difficult for us to see which one's which. Yes, yeah, is, that, is the blue have, line blurry? The blue, what is the blue line? What is that? Is oh, that, that, that is uh, some low, I think, um, I think that is shares, outstanding shares or so. So, so sales is the green line, and then earnings yeah, sales is the green line. Earnings is this this lower okay. blue line. And what's the is that free cash flow? The pink. No, the pink is uh, uh, pre-tax uh, okay. earnings or something. The pre-tax profit, probably. Pre-tax profit. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't load the the other one. Okay. Yeah, the what what uh, uh, what bothers me is this this is the PayPal and this is the Pfizer. Okay, this is over a three year period, three or five years period. What bothers you? It's huh? going down. It has not gone up. Yeah, for last one and a, one and a half year, it has gone down, never going up. What is this? What, this is the company. What does company. that represent? Is that this the is share price? This is the comparison of the PayPal graph with the Pfizer graph. The stock. The stock I know. Price. What is it? Stock, stock price. P stock, stock price. price. The stock, stock price. price. Stock price. Oh, stock price. no. So other companies, uh, Pfizer is sturdy. And, uh, okay. Yeah, stock so price G from big charts. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Jane, why do your price keep dropping for PayPal? Um, as I mentioned, a, a few reasons. Firstly, the the CEO, the current okay. CEO, will retire the end of this year, and so that caused the overhang. And also, 2022, the second quarter, they have a loss, and but they recuperate to the black in third quarter last year. And if you look at the current. Okay. Uh, if you look at the current quarter, uh, uh, 2023 quarter two, uh, the ratio yeah. that is beside, I mean, except financial leverage, we already handle that because it's, it's a normal, it's, a, it's above average uh, for industry. And return on equity, it's actually, uh, uh, you know, also above the industry average. But if you look at the current quarter, the ratios are, are look, looking good. You know, because you're bound to have yes. some uh, challenges, and they did overcome the challenges. And uh, I, I think the new CEO, I, mean, I, I don't have a crystal ball, 
to say that the new CEO is going to really work out really well. But then I think uh, they have taken the time to recruit and they look at, I mean, I look at the, the article about how they chose their, their new CEO. And I feel that they, that, that this uh, Mr. Chris seemed to have the, the, the track record of creating the revenue and, and inventing products in his uh, previous company. And I think he will continue to do okay. so at PayPal. Yeah, so, um, the stock, oh, when, stock, when did they announce? The stock has gone, they from, they gone down from They announced no. the appointment in uh, September uh, this month. I think. Uh, when did the CEO? When did the CEO announce the retirement? Uh, February. Do you remember? February. February 2020. What? 2022. 23. 23. 23. Okay. So, um, ready? Can you bring up that chart just going down, going up? I can't remember that comparison. Hello? The stock price. Huh? Can you uh, move in the your big chart? Which chart? You know, you have the price comparison. Yeah, the pr price comparison is the, uh, the this one. This, uh, this is okay. a, in so percentage wise. 20, yeah, we have question about starting 20 mid year of a 21, 20 to going down. That do you know yeah. what was the reason? Mid year of 2020. Yeah, if you're looking at the right now, a ready screen. Yeah, mid year of a 2021 sliding down, keep going down. I think um, it's the uh, if I recall correctly, it's a competition that they are facing, and they there are a lot of uh, some of the articles mentioning about you know the competition. They are not getting uh, new uh, active accounts, and uh, they are facing on both sides. They have competition, so all this keep on uh, coming up, and but they continue to perform until two. 2022 last year, they did um, have some challenge, but they also came back up. So I think uh, I, I can see the resilience of this company. And it's really, you know, really, and it's taking the action to correct whatever they think it may not be good for the business. Well, in, in, yeah. in addition, in addition yeah. to like, I, th I think the, the stock price is a bit misleading. If you look at historical sales, for example, growth, um, uh, Fiserv is 17.7, .7, PayPal is 17.5. Earning per share growth, uh, Fiserv is 3.3% growth rate over the last 10 years. PayPal is 22.8. If I look at <clears throat> uh, pre-tax profit, they're about the same, more or less. But return on equity, uh, PayPal is almost double return on equity compared to uh, Pfizer. So it's kind of um, a mystery as to why. And then the, the, the it's it's about half uh, PayPal or debt to equities, or sorry, debt to capital is like 25% and Pfizer is 46%. So. And then the, the SSGs, if you look at the, the growth rate, I mean, PayPal is up straight in parallel. Uh, Fiserv is, is a bit choppy. Mm -hmm. But that, you know, so if you, if you just look at the, the numbers, um, it paints a different story than the stock price. I don't know why the stock price is, is uh, underperformed uh, compared to uh, the other one. So. But if I if I look at some of these other numbers, I think that you know it's pretty clear that PayPal is is growing at a much faster rate and a higher return on equity. Yeah, I totally agree. If you can give me the screen, I can show the SSG again. Of course, we already went over the first cut, so now is the time to determine whether the price is worthwhile of investing the price, right, currently. Of course, we don't know whether it will, you know, uh, recuperate to its uh, intrinsic value, which we believe uh, is much higher than $62 right now. So- Jane, could you, um, could, is, could you show 
Did you show the same the same screen for uh, for Fiserv like side by side? Oh, good. So, okay. Uh, I don't know. Ready? Can you? No, just no. if you. Oh, if I you, do. You, Kata, we are looking at your screen. Oh, oh okay. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Side yeah, by yeah, side. Okay. Yes, side by side. Okay. Another thing is. Why ask a great question about why oh. PayPal versus yeah per, per, PayPal versus credit card? Okay, so it will take time to pull out, but um, just looking at the financial ratio, ratios, we already know uh, PayPal also is a bit better than. Uh, Pfizer. It's called a Pfizer? Pfizer? Yeah. Yeah. Pfizer. Pfizer. Um, um so why why is not why not credit card? Why do we use PayPal? Because um PayPal allow you to use not only credit card but a lot of other options. Right? So PayPal, I mean if you use PayPal, then you you can just uh tie your credit card to PayPal account so you can have all the information readily available. But I believe that's the way I do it all the time. But I believe PayPal has other products that provide other channels of payment. Uh, maybe yeah, if, you, you're, if, you're uh, having, if you're buying something online, um, you know, instead of if instead of entering your credit card information online, if you if you buy through PayPal, your credit card is is there linked to it so you can um you know you can use your bank account you can use your credit card but um your credit card information doesn't show up oh. so from, from a safety perspective like if you're you know say you're near in a starbucks and you're buying something online which i would never do but let's hypothetically speak and somebody hacked uh you know the the internet um they could steal your credit card information but if you go through PayPal, you could still use your credit card, uh, but your your information is protected. Yeah, I think that's why I want to know because many years ago that was the reason. It was because of security reason. Yeah. It was the security reason that I use PayPal if I do online transactions. Uh, yeah. And also, I I mentioned briefly that it, because PayPal has a relationship from both sides. Uh, so they actually can avoid fraud because they know the, 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 the merchants well. They also can provide some uh, peace of mind to the uh, consumers. I think that the issue is like the, the competition piece of it is if people are buying through Amazon, let's see, um, then, you know, can they use PayPal? I don't, I don't think they can. Um, and then I don't know about things like Shopify and, and other other um, websites, um, but there's quite a few websites as well that like Kijiji and others that you pay through PayPal. So uh, I think that PayPal is a small bit. A lot of small businesses use that for their uh, payment portal. Yeah. Maybe not so much like Amazon, and I think PayPal was a spinoff from eBay. eBay in 2015. So that yeah. kind of caters to the small business and offers security. And um, I'm not sure if their rate, their percentage, is maybe a little bit less than some of the other payment portals. Maybe I don't think it's low. I think. I think I think I still I stop using that as for for the organization I work because they charging more money so I decided not to deal with it. Okay, okay, we're at seven five. Do we? Want oh wait, Joanne, Isla here. I have a question for Jane. Oh, Isla, uh -huh. a, a a little question. Do you have any idea why there's an activist investor involved in PayPal? The active investors, uh, yes, I do. They. Um, they have a, a major investor, individual investor, and it's really uh, watching over the the PayPal's uh, performance. 
So I'm just wondering, I don't know if anybody knows this at all, but I'm wondering if the dip in sales price, if that happened before the activist investor got involved or after. And I, I'm like, I, it's just an idea. I don't know. I don't know that there's an answer to that, truthfully. But it's just yeah. interesting to me that they, um, that they, their C, they, the CFO changed last year. Their CEO is changing this year, and they have this activist investor thing going on, which means they have change in board seats and that kind of stuff. So just wondering how that yeah, was. Usually, all I mean, out. usually when you have activist investors, they own a lot of stock. Yeah, yeah, and, and they get board, and they get board seats and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and they're they're trying to push the business in a certain direction so that they can make a return mm -hmm. on their investment. Mm -hmm. So, so quite often, if they if they get um, a majority on the board, they'll get rid of the CEO if they don't like the approach or the, you know, um, whatever <laughs> whatever it well, takes. they're getting to, rid of the CEO. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this new guy coming yeah. in, you know, it will have to f function under whatever it is they want him to do. Right, which is presumably increase the share price so they can get the return. Probably yeah. get that. Out. That also yeah. may be the answer to the question before about whether or not they're going to give a dividend. I mean, that activist shareholders tend to want to increase payback to investors, so that may happen. Yeah, and also because of the fact PayPal will uh, sell the business loan segment to KKR uh, this year, and mm. they have a lot of mm -hmm. cash. They also increased their share repurchase to five billion. So I, I don't know if this is the, the the wish of the active investor, but in fact, PayPal is trying very hard to increase the uh, the, the the return. It the sounds investor. like an activist investor thing where they would want them to get rid of something that's more risky. Yeah, certainly, and also uh, it's you know it's actually giving back the cash to the investor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. through repurchase. So yeah. I think with I I'm not saying that the active investors definitely, you know, um, you know, make sure that PayPal is going well, but um, what PayPal has been demonstrating to us in the past ten years or past five years, mm -hmm. I mean as you know, it's so hard to meet the requirement or the criteria of Baku's ratio, right? Yes, it is. And, yeah. So with PayPal's track record in the past five years and even in the current year. I think it's doing really well. And I modify the SSG slightly just to, to help you uh, have a peace of mind that I lower the PE, uh, high PE to 50. I lower the, the, the low PE to 23. So that get to us uh, a lower high price and even a lower uh, low price. Mm -hmm. So even with that, we still have 6.5. I'm interrupting because we're at 7.10 now. Oh, okay. Uh, Sorry. Need, yeah. <laughs> or do you want to just keep discussing and vote next month? It's your choice. We can vote offline, right? I mean, after. Yeah, that doesn't really work. Well, we'll have to, had yeah, we have to leave time for the motions as well. So we did want to vote oh. offline, even if. Okay. But to, 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 Okay, so then we should point, probably that move work on. Very well yeah. For us. yeah, I think so. So I can think I we should move on. Then. Yeah. Can I quickly just say that uh, PayPal? I'm sorry, Amazon takes Venmo, and I heard that uh, I heard Jane say that PayPal owns Venmo, so they are getting some Amazon. They can get some. Definitely. Oh, yeah. that's good. Yeah. Okay, great. So okay. I think at this price, I really think we should consider. I don't know whether the price will come up again, but in any case, I think this is the right entry point. It's near the 52-week low. So yeah, exactly. So that's something. Okay, Mo, great discussion. And so yeah, so great discussion. I appreciate that, and we'll move on. To, and presumably, that will be, you know, we'll touch on the subjects when we bring up the, the motions to, to buy or sell. So at, at this point, I think we can try and we'll move to our guests. Um, pardon me. Yeah, to open up our, uh, open it up to our guests and our visitors for any comments, questions, feedback. Um, 
And let me just see here. I see that uh, Helen has joined us again. Helen, thank you so much for for joining us. Um, did you have any thoughts, comments, questions? I see you have posted a question. I believe we addressed that one. She's self-muted uh, too. Yeah, she's still self-muted. Okay. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, if you do want to unmute yourself and um, and give us your your thoughts, we would we would love to have them. Um, oh, let me now just send you the unmute me. request. Perfect. Hi, hi. Thank you for the invitation to this meeting. I have really enjoyed it, and I'm very impressed with the presentations that uh, the members have given. There's a lot of, I've been in NASA for a number of years, but there's a lot of stuff here I heard tonight. I've been inactive for a while and a lot of new stuff here. So it's great to hear it. And thank you for responding online to my queries. I did make a quick uh, Google search and found out that Elliot, which is uh, some uh, consulting and uh, advisory firm is looking at, is acting as this activist investor and they own nine percent of uh, Pinterest and they might be considering trying to get Pinterest to merge and become part of PayPal. Very strange but anyway it might be worth a Google to see what this activist investor does for your membership. Well thank you. Pinterest doesn't isn't Pinterest um uh, I mean, you can buy things on Pinterest, I believe. No, I think it's mostly a posting, at oh. least as far as I know. I haven't used it to buy things. Maybe you can, but I think people mostly, when I was using it, it was they were using it as a bulletin board. Because okay. I, I thought there was like, um, I, definitely it's like for, for, um, you know, uh, dec uh, what do you call it? Like in interior decoration and that sort of thing. Yep. <laughs> yes. Again, then, but then there were there were articles on, or sorry, items on there that you know they had links, so you could buy something if you saw something that you liked. You could you could go and uh, buy it. Yeah. Maybe that's yeah, there. but I know they've had they've had trouble monetizing that platform. Mm -hmm. yeah. Pinterest as a selling platform didn't take off quite as well as they had envisioned. Okay, can we move on? I just want to be mindful of time. Yep, I'm just unmuting our guests so we can move on. Thank you very much, Helen, again, for, for joining us and for, for your insight. We appreciate it. Um, Jane, I see that. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, did you have any thoughts, questions? comments yes i do um i just want to say thank you for this um beautiful um presentation tonight but i was wondering if you could put the um jane's uh, um um presentation online so for a review for those of us that are new to this uh, platform because she was yeah. a little fast for me Absolutely. So the meetings will be posted on the YouTube channel and uh, you can find a link to our YouTube channel on the agenda in the handout. So uh, give us about a couple weeks and the meeting will be posted in full, uh, full recording with the, with the screens being shared as well. So you'll be able to go back and uh, pause and rewind on, on Jane's presentation as well. So you can, can get the details there. Did you mean a couple of days? Or a couple Couple days, a couple of days. Yeah. Oh, sorry, <laughs> pardon me. A couple of days. Thank you. So, of course, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, and moving next to our next guest, Philip. Um, Philip, I think you're self muted, but thank you very much for joining us. Uh, if you had any questions, thoughts, concerns, we would love to hear them. I really enjoyed this meeting. It was uh, terrific. It moved along pretty nicely, and we haven't received any of the uh, handouts. They were not available tonight. So I presume that they'll be uh, part of the uh, 
uh, YouTube presentation, is that correct? And I'm having a little bit of a problem with your microphone, but I think if I understood you correctly, you said yeah. the link to the handouts as part of the yeah. YouTube link. Yeah, there, there were no handouts tonight. Can you hear me? Oh, right. So, yeah, yeah. So the handouts comprise tonight of the agenda. Uh, so you're okay. right. The presentations are only uh, listed on the shared screen, but those those screens are shared on the YouTube video. So yeah, there is the visual component there. You'll be able to to see the graphs and uh, the other information in the slides that were presented tonight. Yeah, well, there's no agenda available. At least I, I couldn't uh, access it. So oh, uh, yeah, that was okay. I'm sure I was probably the same problem. Uh, okay, well, thank you for letting us know. I think we'll, yeah, we'll take a look because that handout should be available to you. So, uh, the, the, other thing thing I'm, the other thing I want to mention was that the, the new CEO is taking over. Uh, if, this, if this activist firm is on you, uh, they're pretty high profile, as I understand it. And they hired the new CEO coming in, uh, coming at the end of September, uh, was with Intuit. And Intuit is a, a very good company. It's been around a while. It sells out a big number. So I think there's going to be good things happening with PayPal uh, and a lot of activity. So, uh, you know, I, I, I consider this a buy based upon this excellent presentation. And a comparison between it and Fizzer, I mean, PayPal is, take PayPal as you want. You know, I would joke for it. So thank you anyway. Excellent meeting. Well, thank you very much, yeah, Philip. Right. We appreciate you joining. Oh. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank me. you very much. We appreciate it. And uh, please feel free to join us. Uh, subsequent meetings, and uh, we, we'd love to have you. So, so thank you very much. Thank you so very much. Perfect. Thank you. And uh, last but certainly not least, Stuart, I uh, see that you're also muted. Thank you very much for joining us. Did you have any thoughts, concerns, questions, feedback to share? Well, thank you very much for having me. I, uh, to tell you the truth, we're looking for something about local investment group to where I live and playing around on the internet saw this and I just said, well golly, why don't I turn it on and see what it's about? Uh, I'll be honest with you, I'm still looking for something more local where I can have some face-to-face -face contact with friends. Um, but I found this very interesting tonight and I've been very pleased with the quality of not only the research, but the questions about the research that have been asked by people. Thank you for having me. And uh, I think I'll try this again in the future. Perfect. Well, thank you very much for those comments. Thank you for joining us. And uh, I don't, I'm not going to speak for the membership, but despite the fact that uh, we're remote and international, I, I feel like we, uh, we all get along quite well and we've developed some good relationships. So, uh, Definitely, if you're interested in joining again, we'd love to have you. And, and, and thanks very much for, for, for joining us tonight. As I say, I'll probably turn, tune in another time prior to uh, jumping to some conclusion, because I am trying to find a face-to-face -face thing. I'm really getting Absolutely. very tired of two-dimensional meetings after the last <laughs> three years. Yeah, definitely, definitely <laughs> understand that for sure. Philip, where are you located? I'm in Florida in the Orlando area. Okay, I will connect with you to see if I can find an in-person club for you. Because I I tried the old meetup routine and I tried the internet and uh, I was surprised to find only people hawking real estate. Oh. <laughs> okay. I'll let you know. Okay. Thank you. It's 7.20. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I think that's good. That's uh, thank you all our guests and visitors again for joining us. And again, feel please feel free to join us again and, and to reference the meeting on the YouTube uh, channel once it's posted in a few days. Yeah. Uh, so thanks again. I think now we'll move on to club business. Um,
the, the pressing question on everybody's mind is, are there any motions at this point for either buying or selling any of the companies that we discussed today? I think at the beginning of the meeting, Radio had a question about the, the other company was, uh, what do you call that? Oh, gosh, mm -hmm. um, you know, what is that limited yes. order? Limited order. Uh, so paychecks. he was asking, paychecks? yeah, he was asking, paychecks, yeah. yeah. He was asking how, how long do, are we going to take the limited order? I think it's we can do it. Expiration. Down a limit order. Can you repeat yeah. that? I, I'm thinking it's a three month uh, expiration. Uh, okay. I, haven't, I haven't checked it recently, but I think that's correct. I, I don't think oh, it expires, but it, anyway, it is close enough to the target that we should probably consider buying it, right? I mean, it was, it was at 115, and uh, I mean, the Limit price was 115, I, I believe, and it's 115 and change. It's 116 today. Wait, wait, wait a We're asking for what? 110? 115. Yeah, I, 115. No, I mean, sorry. Oh, no, what's the limit of order? Do you guys remember? Was 110? 115. The limit order. 115, was what's the limit of order? How yeah, come yeah. we did not buy? Because it's no, it over. It didn't cross the limit. It's a little bit higher than 115. It was like 115 and change. Oh, so close. So maybe tomorrow. That was something that we I would like to discuss is uh, are we continue hold for another month? Let's do three months because when Dean was talking about Dean was talking about financial ratios are hard to meet. That company's financial ratios was amazing. Yeah. And yes. you don't, like, like, like Baku was saying, once you find this kind of company, you're just waiting for the price. I, I would, waiting I would, for the price. Yeah, waiting for the right price. So there's another, there's another approach. You can, you can do a limit order or you can sell a put. Are you going to sell a put? Sure. Oh, oh option. We don't know how to do yeah, that. Yeah, but we don't. We don't do options. I do, but um, that's how I buy them. Uh, so rather than put a limit order, I just put a. I sell a put at the um, the target price and wait till it gets exercised. And if I if it doesn't get exercised, I keep collecting premium. Premium, yes. So Ooh, once I collect the premium to a certain point, it actually lowers the cost base yeah. to where you, where your, where your limit order is, right? Yeah. I think this is a topic for a, a more extensive topic, maybe next time. Next yeah. time. Yeah. But we just need to make a motion. Yeah. 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 But yes. to answer your question, Jay, no. Jay, uh -huh. to answer your question, like I think, I think if the if the company financials are are still good, then there's no reason why. Um, I mean, we first of all, do we how close to the to the limit order do we want to get? That's the first question. But the second question is, how long do you keep the limit order in play? And the answer is, as long as the company is performing, why would you? uh you know not not just continue to uh to try to buy it at that price because you want to get a, a better return like the question was do you do you wait like a month two months or you know three months or whatever as long as like you've been mm -hmm. waiting a year right as long as the company is still performing and you want to buy it and you have it on your watch list then you just put the limit order in and just keep it indefinitely. I think what she's saying, Hanny, is it's tying up funds because where we're putting in reserve, when we do put in a limit order, we reserve funds for it. Well, uh, if, if there's a better the option, if there's a better uh -huh. option, yes, but if there isn't a the better option, then you could just continue to 
put a limit order in. But yeah, I yeah, it's so like. It's not like I'm answering answering Reddit questions. So I thought it was a hold hold as long as you reach to that point. But sound like he said, "Oh, I'm only holding for one month." That was my question. Is that's a discussion? Are we just go back to hold until hit to that point, or just call it so close? Let's just buy it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like a, it's a mar margin of safety question, right? If, like, if, if it's, if it's, you know, twenty five cents or fifty cents or whatever, I would just buy it. Um, Let's buy it. But if it's a, okay. if it's a larger amount. Yeah. 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 Okay, I make a motion to buy. Pay Sorry, check. what is the company? Paycheck. <laughs> Paycheck. At what price? One fifteen. Well, we don't. Wait, it, it never hit one sixteen. One sixteen point three. Okay. Okay. No, we can't. Do you want to buy this? Why? What's wrong? I just yeah, it's so close. Maybe tomorrow will drop. Let's just say put. I would just say put the limit order, uh, for two months for another two months until. Yeah, you're right. It is a fraction of just a dollar, but the motion is, I don't know. I'm making motion. I'm making, I'm doing, I'm discussion. I'm discussing, discussion with you is, uh, discussing with, with you is whether we buy it tomorrow or doesn't matter what the price is, or should we just put it back to the limit order, wait until price drops to 115? I think after our, I look at after our price is already hitting 115. It's 113.45 after hours. Oh. If you look it, at, could, it could cut yeah. the threshold. Okay. Of course, we, are not, we have not purchased it because our, our limit order is, uh, you know, during the market hours. But after hours, I see Yahoo has shown up 113.45. Okay, so then I will recommend that my motion is by how much share did we say last time? 100 shares? I forgot how much money I have. How much money do we have? Do you guys remember? 7,000 something. 7,000. So 11,500. Oh, you we don't have that money. Okay. You don't have to buy number of shares. You can buy a dollar by a dollar amount. Yeah. And it'll be a percentage. Yeah. Almost. Uh, right. Do you want to leave, do you want to leave the money for possible uh, uh, paychecks? Not paychecks, but yeah. uh, PayPal, PayPal uh, in addition? Yeah. If there's a motion and people want to share. Uh, so let my I'm making motion to bring back limit order by uh, how much did I say it was three thousand uh, was three thousand three thousand worth share of uh, pay uh, paychecks. How much three thousand? We have a seven thousand, right? For three months, limit order for three months to buy three thousand of paychecks. Whatever the whatever the whatever the number of shares I have, I have to find it. So sorry, I just well, well, let me uh, go go look at the report very quick. You guys go ahead and move on to other motions. I'm going to do a quick a quick uh, look at the Reddy's report. You can move on. To other motions. Okay, are there any other motions that are anybody would like to make the any other motions? The broker the broker is seventy six thirty. Seven thousand six hundred and thirty is the cash amount. Okay. Are, there, are there any other motions or are we just gonna stick with paychecks? No motions what, for what pay what 
how does Paychex compare to, or I think I missed the Paychex meeting, but how does it compare to PayPal? It's outstanding. It gets like green all across the board. Solid. Oh, okay. Um, I have a question about, um, which one is it? Fiserv? Does anybody know? This is a general question. Maybe, Hanny, maybe you know this better than anybody else. Does anybody know why a company would move from one exchange to another exchange? Specifically, Fiserv recently moved from NASDAQ to the New York Stock Exchange. Does anybody know why they would do that? It's more for big board. That's where the big players play. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Facebook is pretty uh, big. Yeah. <laughs> Microsoft's pretty big, and they're not on the on the yeah. ISE. But but but, but uh, Google and uh, Facebook, they're all kind of uh, uh, kind of uh, up and coming. They're kind of against. Yeah, the but they're the biggest. They're the biggest companies we have now. Yeah, but they're, they're against. They move the economy, so I don't know that I don't know that the NYSE still has that same cachet in terms of yeah. It, big board, but I'm just wondering why they would move, why anybody would move uh, for a higher quality clientele. Move completely, or they move completely, or are they trade? Yes, out? they move completely and change their uh, ticker. Oh yeah, they moved. They changed their ticker. Yeah, so they were FISV on Nasdaq, and in June they moved to the New York Stock Exchange, and now they're FI. Oh. But I couldn't really find any information on why some why a company would do that. Okay, do you want to hear what ChatGPT says? Sure. Uh. <laughs> Um, stability and prestige, and the New York is often seen as more prestigious and iconic compared to NASDAQ. Um, it can enhance their brand and reputation. Investor base, uh, companies consider moving exchanges to tap into different investor base. Uh, sector focus, certain exchanges have a reputation for hosting companies from specific industries. Listing fees, this might be a... Uh, with different costs and listing fees. Uh, market conditions can influence the company's decision. They feel like they might perform better on a different exchange due to market dynamics or regulatory mm. factors. Oh, okay. uh, liquidity and trading vol volume. Some companies may perceive that they can achieve higher liquidity and trading volumes on one exchange compared to another. Regulatory mm. considerations, regulatory Requirements can differ between exchanges, and a company might find its rules and reporting requirements of one exchange are more favorable or align better with its business objectives. Corporate strategy, a company's decision to change exchanges may be part of a broader corporate strategy. For example, it could be related to a merger, acquisition, or spinoff that necess necessitates a change in exchange listings. Oh. Courtesy of ChatGPT. Thank you, Joanne and Chad. <laughs> yeah, sometimes that is good to know. Uh, sometimes if, if the company is um, uh, reaching a certain size and it might get bumped, um, or if there's like a bigger company that they want to uh, to bring in, uh, they could ask them to, to move. I was wondering if it has something to do with um, Fiserv. Um, part of their original business was um processing for banks and so more banks may be located on the nyse than nasdaq Possibly. you know i just just a thought just a thought and i also have a question you know bakul said that the um those ratios that process didn't lend itself well to, um, to financial companies so i'm wondering if that didn't really and jane you might know this better um that that pro that uh, cool to 10 ratios maybe didn't accurately represent um paypal and pfizer because they're being in the financial industry yeah that's exactly what happened to financial leverage ratio and return on asset yeah. ratio i think yeah. so when i tried to do um um 
swab using that, those bottom rows were all white. So, yeah. 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 Oh, speaking, but cool. of, speaking of that, did I, did I fix the formatting problem or not? I can't remember. I played with it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Can I let you know which um, stocks have moved from NASDAQ to New York? Norwegian, tell me, tell me. Norwegian Cruise Lines, BlackBerry, Oracle, RR Donnelly, and the Madison Square Garden Company. Those are recent examples. BlackBerry? <laughs> yeah, do you remember them? Uh, still BlackBerry? Yeah, Enough right. to move from one exchange to another? Very good, BlackBerry. Considering no one has a BlackBerry, that's pretty good. <laughs> they, uh, they're they actually quite advanced in, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, Security. Security, Security, yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, but nobody yeah. has a BlackBerry. That's the problem. Yeah. Nobody actually no, uses just, a BlackBerry. It's no, wonderful they're that they're great for security. Nobody uses them. Well, they don't. No, but they have the it's patents. Not for phones. It's not for phones anymore. Ooh, they have patents. Ooh. Yeah, they have the patents. Patents so, and good lawyers, they, huh? Okay, are we still okay? <laughs> because. <laughs> I, sorry, yeah, I found it. 4,000 4, shares of a paycheck. $4,000. $4,000. Dollars. Not four thousand shares. Four thousand dollars. Four thousand dollars. Buys how many shares? So do you want a limit order for three months to buy four thousand paychecks? So at the last motion was at the one fifteen for four thousand. I just want to bring that motion back. At one. I just want to bring that limit order back. Sorry, I just want to bring that limit order back. Okay, limit order for three months to buy four thousand dollars of paychecks at one fifteen. Uh-huh. Or, right? or lower. Or lower. Or lower. Uh, or or lower. lower. Yeah. 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 If it opens up Good tomorrow call. at 113, which is uh, yeah. what Jane was Good saying, call. right? We don't want to. Ready, is Ready following this? Okay. Who makes uh, that? Here. Yeah. He's he's just going to do the um, Yahoo Finance that um, yeah, Annie he can do. Yeah, just send, send him, just send him a note okay. or something. Okay. Yeah. So, makes this motion jay you made the motion i make a motion who seconds it wait a minute H hang on what is the <laughs> difference what is the difference between the previous motion and, and the current motion no no difference and the only difference is that ready made a comment that motions ended he thought was no, one month. no motions uh uh it lasts for about four months i just googled it it uh Unless it's specified for a number of days. Well, we can have it, we can have the motion last as long as we want. Right. Okay. Oh, we don't have, we okay. don't have real money, okay. and we're not. No, no. Yeah, but we know the whole. We should specify that in the vote as well. We too, should, right? but I'm just saying we don't we actually. There's that. no limit because we don't have a brokerage and we don't have the money. Right. We don't have real money and we don't have a brokerage, so we can make it last no. as long as we want. No, you yeah. guys are, yeah, you're confusing two things, I think. It, there's the motion mm -hmm. and there there's the limit order. And the right. limit order, I think, in the U.S. is 180 days, I believe. I'm 120. Sure. Okay, so the, then we, I don't, we don't need to make a new motion. Still valid. Though. Yeah. So it's okay, still going. We'll the like, motion is right. still carrying, right? Okay. All right. Still carry, yes. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anything okay. else? Any pay, PayPal? No? Okay. Keep a watch on PayPal? Yeah. Keep a watch. yeah. We'll definitely add it to the watch list if we don't uh, yeah. have a motion tonight. Anybody what, interested what, in Fiserv? Yeah. Oh, Fiserv? I like PayPal. What's though. your concern? I have, I have, I have, I want to know what's your concern. About what? About paycheck. Paycheck. Oh, sorry. PayPal, PayPal. Um, because it can it's continuing to go down. Yeah. Maybe it hasn't hit its bottom yet. Two things. Both of those companies are pretty large, and they're going to have mm -hmm. slowing sales as we go forward. Second thing is that Fiserv's price doesn't change very much at mm -hmm. all. It's almost flat. So there's not going to be a big jump up in Fiserv's price at any point. They have better chance of that with PayPal, but you know, but again, they're both very large companies, and their sales and whatever are going to slow as we go forward. So 
that's just part of the deal. Mm. You mean the sales growth will be lower than yeah. the small company? Yes, I yes. agree. Yeah. I, I mean, yes. I, I think the the um, estimates chosen are appropriate for companies that size. And in this economy, I think that's great. But I think that just as, you know, time goes by, some of that stuff is going to, some of those, some of that growth rate is going to decline a little bit more because they are big companies. They're not tiny companies. Yes, I do agree. It's a big company. But the growth rate is based on, the track record, as well as the forecast, mm -hmm. as well as uh, mm -hmm. the the we already put a margin of safety there. Mm -hmm. So the issue is not about the SSG or the pricing. The issue is about how this company is going to handle the competition in the future, and that may affect their market share. So that may affect you know uh, their share price. You know, and even though currently we believe the intrinsic value is much higher than the current price, share price mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. but because of the fact that the share price continue to go down, uh, that has not shown any uh, any uh, proof of, you know, coming up. Right. So it's a, right. it's a human nature to mm -hmm. deter from it, to prevent from buying it. Mm -hmm. But I guess, you know, it really takes a... a, a, a you know, contrary mind, you know, to, to do this. Um, Jane, right? I have a question. So the pay, buy now, pay later, is that like a credit? So you buy it yes. now and then you pay in, in, in installments? Uh, pay later. I haven't, I haven't or, tried, but the idea is that they allow the consumer to pay later. So it's like a, a credit. And they okay. do have their own credit card. But when they I think when buy now, pay later first started, it was a thing where you had to pay. You could buy whatever you were buying and you could break it up into a number of different payments. The only yes. real caveat was those payments occurred every week. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Which is why a lot of people are now not paying those things off because they didn't realize it wasn't going to be once a month like your credit card. Interesting. So, and that may be what makes the buy now, pay later thing a little more risky and why they're trying to sell it off to KKR. Okay. I think the point is that whether you think the, the intrinsic value is high enough mm. to give us a, a, a sufficient margin of safety. And return. If you, because if you think, oh, because we haven't seen any, the share price coming up and mm. keep on going down, then how would you ever purchase it? How mm. would Warren Buffett ever make the decision to enter any company to invest? So I, really assume, have to, I assume he knows more than I do. Yeah, well, I think what we need to think, I mean, unless yeah. you really feel yeah. strongly that the competition is going to, you know, there's a, mm. a clear evidence the competition is going to, really deter this company from you know maintaining its market share but i think there's enough brand trust in this company don't you think yeah i think so i mean there's a lot of loyalty for this company yeah, I mean, uh -huh. for this brand mm -hmm. and they they i mean the they, they know both sides so they they have the capability mm -hmm. of you mm -hmm. know avoiding fraud that's a, a big issue as well for consumer mm -hmm. so I, I just think you know it's at the right price. Of course, I did the research and I personally invest in it. So mm -hmm. I will not, I will not raise a motion for it. But I still think it's a, it's a great company at this price. Hmm. Well, you know, I uh, uh, just lo looking at an article here about um, uh, PayPal and on Yahoo, and they're saying that Yahoo is facing a number of challenges amidst. Uh, changing leadership and stagnant growth. Stagnant growth, that's the killer. Uh, when a company is growing quickly for a lo long time and it stops growing, that's it, everybody abandons ship. The stock market likes growth. Well, people want to make money. Yeah, that's it. But the, the, on, on the other hand, uh, as Jane was saying, there was another uh, article I was reading somewhere uh, they said when you want to buy a stock, 
uh, you know, you want to, you don't want to pay too much. So what you should do is look at the uh, PE of the general market and make sure the stock that you're looking at it has a PE that's not too far above that of the general market. And I'm looking at the PE of PayPal and it's 17.24. The general market generally has a, pay, a PE ratio of about 16, 17. So PayPal is exactly right. Hmm. It's not too expensive. It's more or less fairly valued. There's also the idea that they may start giving a dividend, which would add to their return. Yeah, yeah. This new CEO, like, you know, uh, we don't know what he's going to do. So it's a good bet to buy it because the PE is 17, which is, you know, barely above market uh, uh, PE. So it's not over bloated. It's not overpriced. Uh, the price is 52 week low. It's just, yeah, it's it's a good time to buy. Are you going to make a motion? Who? You. <laughs> I'm going to make a motion to buy. Who? Who, me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You see, the, the other thing that I'm looking at Yahoo, I'm looking at some of the uh, uh, the analysts on the analyst page, right? And I'm looking down that, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, earnings per, earnings uh, tr earning per share trends. Uh, you know, 90 days ago it was 122. Today it's 123 uh, earnings for per share. Uh, and then for uh, the next quarter of 2023 it was 140. It's still 140. Uh, cur uh, current year it's uh, 495 per year, and it's still 495 per year. They're they're not assuming they're not seeing any growth. But so that's why the price is down. You know, the, the, the right. market is punishing it because of the lack of growth. And, um, you know, it, that's why the price is down. I think it would be a good time to buy. Okay. Are you making a motion, Piero? Sure. I'll make the motion. How many, how, how much money? How much do we have? <laughs> well, I think well, we, we just set aside $4,000. So. Yeah. Well, we just decide. Yeah. Three thousand. Four thousand dollars for paycheck. Yeah, I would say. Probably left three thousand for, for PayPal. Well, what about two thousand? Say about two thousand for PayPal. You want to do two thousand? Say two thousand. So buy two thousand dollars worth of PayPal. Yeah. Motion by Piero. Anybody want to second it? Is anybody left here? I'll second. Jane, I didn't want to second. She proposed it, so she doesn't want to. Uh, oh, okay. gotcha. Who wants to second it? I will. Who's that? Who's I will? Well. Well, <laughs> Sorry, I didn't recognize your voice. Okay, so uh, close voting if majority is reached. Um, do I have a date? Oh, how, how long do you want me to leave this open? So Wednesday? Friday? Hello, Jane, you're still sharing your screen. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> you guys want me to leave this open? How about um, Oh, wait a second. So I think before we used to leave it open too long. How about till Wednesday? Leave it open till Wednesday? Sure. Oh, that's two days. Okay, yeah. You want Friday? But Wednesday is enough, right? You should just vote if you see it come up on your um, email. Okay. Okay, so I'm saving it. So voting ends um, September 20th and votes, it closes sooner if majority is reached. A simple majority and one person, one vote. Okay, here we go. I'm sending it off. Can you send the email to those uh, to everybody so those who are not present now know how you know they yeah. should vote? They go to everybody. Okay. Okay. Any other motions or what? What do you do a business or All right. Is there anything else? Oh, well, you and I are going to do a stock study for next. Month. Does anybody else want to participate in a stock study for next month? 
No. Okay. Wait. So what is next month? Next month is October. Okay. Yeah. Uh, All right. So I thought I we were going to do an educational topic. So. Yeah. Right. What was that? I thought I was going to do an educational topic. Uh, I, know. I have you down. Is, did John leave already? John. 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 He's here. He's muted. He's muted. Oh, he's probably doing his other. Let me see. Um, okay. Screen. I'm curious to know about how China is doing, Jane, after this meeting. Um, okay, so next month I have Mina doing a, the education topic. And then, well, you and I are going to do a stock study, unless you don't want to do a stock study. Uh, well, you, okay, what are we doing the, on? Whatever you feel like. We're going to, let's meet and we can do stock uh, a screening. Unless you have some ideas that you want nope. to. No, I don't. You don't have any ideas. <laughs> okay, so I'd like I'd like to join if that's okay. Oh yay, Isla! Uh, Isla probably has some ideas. <laughs> Isla, <laughs> okay, so um, well, just real quick, Hoel and Isla, are Monday evenings okay to meet like um, five? Yes, uh, for, me. for me, yes. Uh, well, uh, I've got an current engagement, but uh, Tuesdays in, in chance Tuesdays is the evening. Say that again. I couldn't hear you.